Hello, my name is Robert Hollis. I want to thank you very much for tuning into this Periscope today. The title is How to Handle Change. Now, I used to be an auto mechanic from North Dakota, and today I'm a life mechanic, which is lifemechanic.com. You can check it out there and click on the blog. And the reason that I bring that up is I did a show yesterday, which is change. Change happens whether you like it or not. And I love it. It says change is not necessary, but according to Edward Deming, I say it's required. But one of the things that Edward Deming says is that survival is not mandatory. So I'm going to share with you really quickly on how to handle change. And I'm going to do it from my own personal story. And I think that each and every one of you will really, really hopefully just reflect on how you've dealt with change in the past, what worked and what didn't work. Isn't it amazing that we all get to use our personal stories on stuff like this? So it allows you to reflect. Hopefully, you know, I'll give you a neat quote that from uh, uh, Richard Branson, a multi-billionaire. You know, he owns Virgin Records or did. Uh, Virgin Mobile did. Uh, that's that's a good one. Change now, Vir, you know, Virgin um, Galactic, where you can go there and pay a couple hundred grand, be an astronaut of, in, in space, or what you can do is actually get on Virgin, which is is uh, airlines, right? So I think he's got like seven hundred companies or something like that. But anyway, here was the thing that he was said. A reporter found him in in the airline, the airport, and um, he was waiting for his own private plane. And he was waiting and seeing him in the airport. And this reporter walked up to him and said, can I ask you a couple of questions? And he said, of course. And he says, what do you think is the key? The number one key to your success? And he said, wisdom. Wisdom without a doubt in, in my mind. The number one key to success is wisdom. And the guy goes, well, where do you get wisdom from? And he goes from making mistakes. <laughs> so isn't that funny that a lot of people that are not successful, they don't want to fail. See, they don't want to fail. They're worried about what other people are going to think about them. They're worried about what other people are saying about them. And think about this. It's like it doesn't make a difference what they say about you. What they say about you is none of your business. What they say about you is none of their business. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. You're going to get this. And so let's talk about a little bit, and I apologize, but I want to share with you from my own personal story, right? So if you think about your whole entire life, good and bad, there was changes that happened in my life. And when they happened, there was things that I fought. See, there's three responses, in my opinion, that you can have. Couple of them negative, couple of them uh, 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 positive, some of them negative. So when change happens in your life, you can flat out fight it. You can fight it, man. You can say, I'm going to fight it. I'm not going to change. That ain't happening to me. And you can do your best to try to fight against change. Now, if you look through your entire life, I want you to analyze and, and, and listen to your past stories. Think about your past stories and ask yourself, how many times have you resisted change and fought against change and won? One Came out the other end happier, came out the other end more successful, came out the other end, and everything is better because you fought it, right? And so let me tell you a couple of quick, oh, well, let me give you all three of them, right? So you resist it, you fight it. Second, you could ignore it. Just totally ignore it. It's happening around you. Everybody's saying it's happening. The change is happening. The change is happening. And you just refuse to ignore it. Now, ask yourself this question again. By ignoring it, did that help? Did it make you happier? You know, you know, people would rather be right than happy. People would rather be right than wealthy. People would rather be right than healthy. See, they'd rather be right and fight against something or ignore it. Say it doesn't matter to me. That's not it's it's not happening to me. And then the last one, of course, is be excited about it. Be excited about it, embrace it. 
uh, be, be like, wow, this is all new. So now let me share with you really quickly a couple of very significant emotional events that happened in my life, right? And, and, and they're positive and they're good ones. One of the biggest ones that I can remember, and it's not a good thought, but overnight, you know, my, my father at the age of 12, you know, 13, um, right there is my father, you know, got really, really drunk and he physically beat up my mom to the point where she needed to be put in the hospital. Now, I remember being in the backyard and witnessing that and feeling so incredibly helpless. I didn't know what to do. And, and it was so upsetting to me and I couldn't do anything. I was, just, I just felt, you know, I've never felt so unworthy. I've never felt so helpless in my life. And the next thing that happens is, of course, the police come down. They arrest my father, throw him in jail. And, and the next thing that I know is another change happened. Now, guess what? Someone bailed my dad out and we're at this like protective place, right? And he walks up and he says, you know what? You'll never have to worry about this ever happening again. And I'm afraid of my dad. He beat me up all the time. And all of a sudden, I see him and there were people that were protecting me and my mom and my two brothers, younger brothers from my dad. And he says, I'm sorry, this will never happen again. That was the last time I seen my father. That was the last time I physically seen my father. And I thought, wow, things are going to be different from this point on. They're going to be really, really different. I knew they were going to be different, but I didn't know what was going to happen. And so the next thing I know is that my mom's out of the hospital. The next thing I know is there's these people showing up at our house and they're talking to my mom and my mom's not happy, not happy at all. And I didn't know who these people were. Come to find out their child uh, services, their, their, their children's services. And what they did is they made a decision that my mom would not protect me and my brothers and they took me away. They took me away and I got put in foster homes. So it was not only the loss of my father, but now I'm not around my mom. And I'm around a bunch of people that I didn't know. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, I fought it. I fought it. I was sad. I was um, crushed. I felt abandoned. I, I don't know how many words that I can explain of what I went through. And, you know, I had a chip on my shoulder. I had a chip on my shoulder. I had this concept in my, in my life that everybody, I mean everybody, is going to end up abandoning me sooner or later. There was something wrong with me. As soon as people got to find out who I was, they're, they're just going to abandon me. They're just, they're just going to leave me. And so all of a sudden, I can remember that I just had a bad attitude. I was very, very introverted. If I wasn't introverted before, I'm really introverted now. And I didn't work out really good with the first family. I got sent to another family. Uh, that didn't work out very good. And then I got sent to the Johnstones, Ted and Janice Johnstone. Isn't it amazing that at the age of 13, I sure know these people's names. And the reason why is because they treated me like a human being. They, they, they embraced me. They said they, they were there for me. And it wasn't words. They didn't lie to me. They didn't lie to me. They, they, um, um, they really, really, really cared for me. And they told me that if I did good in school, that they would do other things for me. And I did good in school. It was the first time that anyone ever really gave a crap about Robert Hollis. And, and so they started putting interest in me. And because they did, they, you know, Ted told me, listen, I'll make you a deal. You got to, you got to study an hour on each subject that's below a C. If you get C or above, you don't have to study on that subject. Do you guys realize 
it took less than one report card. <laughs> Because someone finally told me what to do and I wanted to make them proud and they really invested in me. And I started excelling in school. I started excelling in sports. And guess what? I, I still got a learning disability, but guess what? That didn't follow me. You know what? When I went to that school, no one ever took the time to find my records or anything. I'm now a different person. And now I embraced See what I mean? So I went through the ugliness of fighting it. You know, you're not going to go against me, da 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 And now all of a sudden the negative turns into a positive. And Ted and Janice are incredible people. I wasn't the only foster kid there. Uh, talk about change. I was only one of two people, another foster kid, Mitch Cycle, and we were the only two white kids on an entire Indian reservation. <laughs> And guess what? They cared. They treated me just like they did their other sons and daughters. I could feel it. The more I did, the more I got praise and recognition. They believed in me and I wanted to make them proud. And, and so everything changed. Why didn't it change in the first home and the second home? I wasn't ready. See, I was too busy ignoring what was going on in my life and I was too busy fighting and resisting that. And so I want you to ask yourself, how many times in your life has change come about? And when change came about, you just threw caution to the wind and just said, hey, listen, I'm going to be open-minded. Tell me about this. What's going on? How do I make this work? How, does that, how, how do I get to do this, this, and this? Now, even though that was hard for me to talk about and emotional for me to talk about, there was a couple other quick ones I want to throw at you, right? So I'm going to move all the way forward. And, you know, my son, Robert Hollis Jr. on here, he, you know, he's going to hear this. and I know he's heard it before. And then all of a sudden, you know, I believe I'm doing everything right. My life now is on a upscale, man. You know, we got, like Jim Rowan says, we got winters in our lives. We got, you know, springtime. We have summertime. We have fall. And then we have winter. So regardless of what's going on in your life, guess what? Winter's coming. And this was just a time in my life where everything was going great. And, and uh, you know, all of a sudden I get married to Robert Hollis Jr.'s mom. Her name was Susan. And uh, then I have him. Wow, what a blessing that is. I get out of college, graduated on the top of the dean's list. Things are awesome, man. I immediately apply for jobs, get a job in Billings, Montana. And I'm working for Goodyear. Everything is going awesome. Everything's going great. And then all of a sudden, Susan comes home and says, listen, I don't want to be married to you anymore. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She says, listen, I just don't want to be married to you anymore. And I go, you're not taking my son. She goes, I don't want him. I had a very sheltered childhood. I'm now on my own. I don't want to be married and I don't want to be a mom. Wow. <laughs> now, guess what? Uh, how many of you, when stuff like this happens, you just go, hey, okay, that's great. No, of course not. You see what I mean? So all of a sudden, I'm like, what's wrong with me? You know, it's got to be me. It sure in the hell can't be her. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with my son, Robert Hollis Jr., you know what I mean? His, his, his birth name is Darcy, D-A-R-C-Y. And, and uh, you know, it's like, wh what do we do wrong? You know what I mean? And I did everything. I, I mean, again, I did everything. What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? You know what I mean? And, and, and I helped her, you know, get an apartment. I helped her get, we only had one car at, the t at a time. So I helped her. Um, I helped her get a car. I did everything I possibly could to not allow change to happen. Guess what happened? It happened anyway. <laughs> it happened anyway. She made a decision. She went on her own way. She felt that she would be happier and she went on her own way. 
And there's nothing, nothing that I could do or nothing that my son could do at that time in her life to change the outcome. So what do you do? One, you resist it. You fight it. Two, you act like nothing's going on. Three, you accept it and you move on. You accept it and you move on. And if I didn't accept it and move on, I wouldn't have found the wife that I have today, which is Terry. So she went off and did her thing, and I went off and did my thing. Now, again, I ask you a question. How many things have changed in your life, and when they change, you're lost, you try to ignore, you try to resist and fight, and when you're tired, I mean tired, of being right. You're tired of being, you know, well, it's a principle. You know, she shouldn't do this. I got a friend of mine, and every one of us, since I jumped on this subject, I want you to think right now of the people that you know that are still in ignore mode. They won't embrace the change. They're not excited about the change. They're just in zero land. You know, I, I'm being mean when I say this, but I, I I mean it. They say that most people die, I mean, um, die at 25 years of age, but they get buried in their late, you know, in middle 70s. Because if you looked at their life and, and hooked up a heart monitor, it's like, beep, it's just flat line. They're like robots. They're just existing. So it doesn't make a difference what's going on in the world and how fast is changing for the positive. There's a whole group of people out there that think all the changes, you know what I mean, are for the bad. There's still people out there that want the world to be back like, like, is there any way we can bring the world back to the 1960s? No! <laughs> <laughs> I remember how good it was when I went to high school. It wasn't good for me. I'm, I was glad to move on. I couldn't wait for the new chapter in my life. <laughs> and so I want you guys to just think about that. So who do you know right now? Think about them. You could, you could put their names, but you know people that are fighting and resisting change. You know people that are ignoring change. And then you know people that are embracing change. They're positive. They're excited. They're going, man, I've never learned more. You know, I talked to Kerry Bradford today. And, you know, on, on the Ask Me Anything that I do six days a week. And she was saying the amount of information that she's learned in the last year. And, I mean, that's exciting to me when you can look back a year ago and go, I'm not even the same person. I don't think the same. I don't feel the same. I don't have the same things that bog me down. You know, as everybody's, oh, everything's changing. I don't care. You know what I mean? I'm I'm bundled into the change that's happening. Carrie, I see you on here, man. Hearts to you. I just think you're amazing. And so... You know, you love people that see change in their life. I see Shirley on here, her and Jamie, when they talk about all the changes that happen in their lives. And it's like, that's what you want to be a part of. And a lot of people don't want to go along with you. They're, they don't want to go. In fact, I got to dedicate this uh, Periscope not only to Carrie, but also Scott Kloster. Because when things happen in your life, you all of a sudden go, oh, no, what do I do? I'll tell you what to do. You're, you got to be open-minded, you got to get excited, and you got to embrace change because it's going to happen with or without you. All right? So let's talk about one more in my life because I think that each and every you, one of you are, are going to get this. Okay, so now I'm married. You know what? Everything's going awesome. Ah, I'll make it through the winter. I got into the, you know, spring, met Terry, married Terry, you know, everything's going awesome. Get moved to California, got a job that paid, oh, almost 20 times more, 20 times more. Love my job. Everyone's giving me praise and recognition. I'm getting, I mean, I'm getting rank advancements. I'm getting promotions. Boom, 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 boom. I'm working for professional race cars. Everything is going great. All of a sudden, van slips off a hoist. I try to stop it. 
I'm, I'm mentally, if you ever heard anybody say <laughs> that they had a lapse in judgment, man, that was one of my biggest. It's like, Step away. The other three technicians stepped away. So what? They got insurance. It's no big deal. You know what I mean? The guy gets a new van. Hey, it's awesome. No, I try to stop the van. So I try to stop the van. It slips off the hoist, slams my back against my toolbox, hyperstends my knee, and totally wipes out my knee. Change. Now, guess what happened? I'm telling you guys, I'm a human being. I fought this change for nine months. Nine months. How many of you have been fighting change longer than nine months? I fought, I stayed in winter. I stayed in winter for way longer than you're supposed to. Winter, and if you got a, a, a um, you know, you can have a baby in nine months. That's a huge change, right? And you got to realize that your whole life will change that fast. And all of a sudden, I, I'm at the doctor. He says, my knee's messed up. The doctor says, we're going to do surgery on it. Uh, you'll never be able to support your weight again. You will never be an auto mechanic again. You will never be an auto mechanic again. You won't be able to support your weight. You, you'll be lucky if you can run with your son. It's change. And I'm like, no way, you know, no way. I even got in trouble with the rehab people while I was on workman's comp because I put a, a bag on my leg, a flower bag on my leg, and I was exercising my leg inside the cast. And guess what? They have ways of figuring that out. So you're supposed to, your muscles will start, you know, you're, you're shrinking while it's in the cast and they're measuring my legs and they're going, you're working out. You're not supposed to work out your leg. I go, what are you talking about? They go, don't lie to me. Your, your muscles are not shrinking because you're working out your leg. You're going to hurt your knee. And if you hurt your knee, then you're not going to stay on workman's comp. I'll take you off workman's comp. I'll take you off rehab. You'll lose all your rights to learn a new career. And so, okay, 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 okay. I, I, I won't do it. I won't do it. Long story short, went in, got another surgery, and I sold everything. I, I, I pawned my tools. I pawned my tools in my toolbox. I sold everything that I had because I was going to prove them wrong. I was going to prove them wrong. See, it's right to be right. I'd rather be right than happy, right than uh, uh, successful, right than, than making money, right than having a relationship. You know, so I totally felt worthy, worth, worth, no, I didn't have any money at the time. So, so Dars at that time, that was the first time that I sent him back home. You know, so he goes home and, and stays with his mom because I can't afford to take care of him. Right. So you guys heard the deal where I said, you know, listen, I'm driving and, you know, I, I'm hiding the car from the repo man. And, and guess what? I'm fighting it. They're telling me I need another surgery and I'm selling everything. I'm getting a loan on my car. The only one that I own. So now I can't pay the payments. I got the repo man. And I'm like, I'm doing my freaking best. And you put survival mode. Surely I was in fighting mode. I was fighting change. I was fighting change. The reason that my, my finances got worse every month, the reason that my lifestyle, that was when all of a sudden I said, Terry, I, I, I'm not, I'm not worth being your, your, your man. You know, you need to go back to Montana. I'm losing everything. So I beat myself up so bad that I'm not around my son. I sold everything I have. Um, I'm about ready to get kicked out of my apartment. I ruined my relationship because I was fighting change. I was fighting change. And you guys always hear it. So I finally surrendered. I surrendered all. I got down on my one knee. Yes, crying, sabotaging. Yes, 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 yes. Fighting change. And I finally gave up. I finally gave up. I wasn't 
interested in fighting no more. I humbled myself. I got on the one knee I had left and I said, God, please, I, you got my attention. <laughs> I, I, if you want me to go in the ministry, if you want me to, to hook up with some, you know, uh, uh, and, and do missionary work, whatever you want me to do, I'm tired. I'm tired. You know, help me. And then I get a call from Sean. You guys know about it. It's in the book. And I go down and I meet my mentor, Bill Gould. And when I meet him and he starts talking about being an entrepreneur and teaching other people and, and, and going out there and spreading the, 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 uh, you're right. I, I am in a ministry, uh, Melinda. And, and then all of a sudden it's like, all of a sudden I'm excited again. All of a sudden I got hope again. All of a sudden I'm inspired again. And what I'm doing this time is I'm listening. This time I'm listening. Why? Because I know I don't freaking have the answers. I know that all the answers that I had up to that point got me to where I was. I also realized that my wisdom, my knowledge, my brain got me in that current situation. Here's a phrase for you. And listen closely. How can you take the same awareness, the same mindset, the same everything that got you in your current situation and use that same philosophy, psychology, mindset to get you out. You can't. If you knew the knowledge and the wisdom and the actions that needed to be taken to get you out, are you actually telling me as you watch this video that you get up every day and make a decision to struggle? Make a decision to not have the things that you deserve in life. I'm making a decision just to stay where I am. Why? Because I'm a know-it-all. Why? Because I don't want to try. Why? Because I, I, I don't believe in myself. Are you kidding me? See, I know where you are. You can't BS me. Because I've been there too many times. Too many times. Why? I guess I'm a slow learner. <laughs> so all of a sudden, I meet my mentor. I'm so humbled. And I say this to people all the time. I pray to God, I pray to God that each and every one of you don't have to lose every freaking thing you have. All your material stuff, all your relationships, all your everything. I pray to God that you guys don't wait as long as I do. I wait until it's all gone. I'm stubborn. I, I, I hang on for everything. And then guess what? I meet Bill Whammo. Well, now that I got my career to finish off this Periscope, guess what? I've been in 16 companies. If I count Life Mechanic University that we're launching today, that's 17. So I'm like Richard Branson. I'm like the other multimillionaires and billionaires on the planet. I get my wisdom from knowledge. Knowledge of trying things and they don't work. So now I got my career. Everything is going great. Ah, everything's going great. Overnight, my mentor says to me and all the leaders, I'm leaving this company and I'm starting my own. Uh, change. <laughs> now guess what? Here's the problem with that change. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it doesn't work. So my mentor started his own company. It didn't take off as fast as it was supposed to. Uh, when he's tried to make it work in certain ways, the government took it away. You can't stay in a company. He started a company called Equinox International. It went to the top of the Inc. 100, 500 magazine, like faster than any company, and then it disappeared. So you can't stay with a company that no longer is in business. So then I regroup. Guess what? For two years, I fought that one. I'm not that smart. You guys give me a lot of credit, but I'm giving you all my wisdom, right? 
You guys get to learn through my mistake. So I struggled again for a year and a half. Lost everything. My Matthew and Kyle, too young to remember, they had to move in with my mother and father-in-law. Don't have a home. Everything's in storage. Lost my car. <laughs> Why am I laughing at this? Because I love change. Because change means that I'm going back to spring. I'm learning faster. I'm learning quicker. Instead of a whole bunch of years, I've tried to do my best to narrow that down to like six months. And then less time, it's like now I got people around me that, wow, Robert, you seem to be complaining. You know what I mean? If you're complaining about this and you're about complaining about this, why aren't you changing things? You know what I mean? If it's to be, it's up to me. Right? Why are you fighting change? And so all of a sudden, you know, I went to another company, built a large organization. Then they got all the gas and electricity customers taken away. Up and down, up and down. Then I get another company, built that company all the way to the top. Then all of a sudden, you know, 2008 happened. Wham, you know, economy flip. No one's buying travel. All of a sudden, wham. Then I get in another startup, drive that all the way to the top, making two and a half million dollars a year. And all of a sudden, the guy that's running that company decides to start his own. Wham. <laughs> it's like the one thing we all know is going to happen is change. It's going to happen with or without you. So guess what? Did I embrace it the last time it happened? No. I, I hung around. I went, uh, uh, uh. So then, unlimited profits. My current story right now is unlimited profits. So I put together this great idea. Ah, my God. What if I paid out 90%? What if I, you know... Find a way to build an opportunity that's the best out there where marketing, digital, uh, uh, digital stuff. Man, this is going to be awesome. And I know that if the company gets like a thousand paying members, then I'll finally make money. And I put millions of dollars into this thing. Over two million bucks. Four or five years of my life. And now guess what? I look at it, you know, add all this stuff to it and people right now do not want, listen to me, they don't want a business opportunity. <laughs> I keep thinking all the time that people are motivated by money. If they are motivated by money, they don't, we, everyone that's watching this periscope, periscope would be wealthy. So now I go, okay, so what do I got to do? What do I got to do? All right. So now what I'm doing, I'm launching Life Mechanic University. And my goal for this Periscope is not to pitch you. That's not what the deal was. My deal is now that now that I made a decision and I know that decisions happen with or without me, I know where the world's going. And so I take the time to surrender. A lot of you people didn't know that I did. But I'm like, listen, if this is not working, I need to go back out and learn from people that are making incredible income in this digital time. And I reached out to people like Jeff Walker and Brendan Burchard and, and Ray Higdon. And they're the ones that said, Robert, you gotta put products together. People wanna buy a product because like they wanna buy an exercise machine, like they wanna buy a new diet program. People wanna buy things because it makes them feel good. If they're not at the right timing in their life, which is a video I already done, if they don't know what they want, which is a video that I've done, if they're not disgusted enough and enough's enough, that's a video that I've done. See, if, if, if you go through lifemechanic.com forward slash blog, all the videos I've been doing are up to this time. Where now I'm in another point of change and now that I've made the change, guess what? Now people, the video yesterday, Change is happening, the video today. And you got to ask yourself very simple, is are you fighting and resisting change because you're, you're comfortable? I'm just comfortable. Are you a fighter and a resister because you're a know-it-all? Or are you a fighter and resister and an ignorer because of other people's opinions? You're a people pleaser. So I want to finish out this Periscope by reading this. I'm going to post it tomorrow with this video. 
You, you don't, don't ever feel bad by making decisions in life that upset other people. You are not responsible for their happiness. You're responsible for your own happiness to be the best person that you possibly can be so that your personal development, your happiness, hopefully will rub off on your family and their happiness and their lifestyle will rub off on their families. You're more of your extended family. And only then can you affect a small area, a small town or rural that can affect maybe a city, that maybe can affect a state, that could affect the country, that could affect the world. And so you got to make the decision and not be worried about what other people think. I've been reaching out to other people that have been following me for a long time, and you know what their first thought is? What's everybody going to think? What about you? What about you? Don't you deserve to be happy? Don't you deserve to be enthusiastic? Don't you be, shouldn't you be excited about embracing change in your life? So is someone like me, whether you believe in me or not, is someone like me is constantly looking for a new way to improve your and other people's lives faster. That's why I pour my heart out on Periscopes. I, wouldn't it be awesome if Periscope paid me? <laughs> wouldn't it be cool if I got paid for every heart? Man, I just got chills. Every heart that I got was worth a dollar. <gasps> heart, 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 heart. Help, help, help. <laughs> You guys know me. I'm giving away 90% anyway to charity. But, you know, so here we go. So you're not responsible. You know, anyone who wants to live in your misery for their happiness should not be in your life to begin with. If other people's first words out of their mouth, listen very close. If you're making a decision in your life for you and your family to be happier and the people that you're talking about, the first words out of their mouth is, what about me? What about the other people? They're not thinking about you. They don't give a rip about you. Wow. If you're really, really talking to someone that's a close personal friend, and they go, listen, Flora, I'm making a decision. And I want to talk to you about it. The first words out of their mouth is, how do you feel about this change? What could I do to support you? Have you thought how this will affect your family? Are you going to be able to do it? Are you finding the right mentors? See, when you reach out with a new exciting goal and stuff for you, and you're going, hey, listen, listen what I'm doing. I'm excited. And think about this in closing. How many times have you in your life told somebody about a change and they reacted that way? So you're out there and you're going, hey, check out my new girlfriend. Check out my new boyfriend. And immediately they start going, yeah, but what about me? <laughs> oh, you got a new boyfriend? Yeah. Well, I suppose you won't be spending any more time with me then. What about our Saturdays? What are your children going to think? What the hell? See, people don't even know that they're doing it. And I'm, I'm calling them out. So you call up somebody, hey, listen, guess what? I found something new that I think is going to really help me and it's going to be able to help my family and I get to help more people on the planet than I ever have. What about me? Is this going to change things for me? What about the other people? They're telling you right in front of your face. I don't care about you. You just told me all the stuff that's going on in your life, that you're making some changes, they're going to be difficult, but you're excited about them, and their first thought is them and other people. Wow. 
I hope you wake up. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what's unique about other people. This is what's unique about other people is you get to find the people that love and support you right away. Because guess what? They're, you go, hey, listen, I, I just, you got a minute? Sure. Well, listen, I wanted to talk to you because I'm thinking about some change and some stuff. Really? That's awesome. Uh, you think so? Yeah. You think it's going to make you happier? Yeah. More fulfilled? Yeah. Is it going to allow you to give more to charities? Yeah. Is your family going to make more? Yeah. Good job. What can I do to help you? How can I support you? What, what do you need? No, in this day and age, the majority of people that we surround ourselves by would rather fight us, fight us, resist us, ignore us. They're not ready for change. The timing's not right for them. They're not disgusted enough. They don't want anything. They don't want it bad enough. Move on. <laughs> you should be surrounding yourself by a group of people that you go, hey, we're having a family meeting. Let's all get together. Mary Ellen's got something exciting to share with us. She's about right. And, and you guys, I'm saying this right now because I, I'll close out with this. I said I was going to close out. Do you know when I tell my wife, Terry, when I tell my son, Darcy, Robert Jr., Robert Hollis Jr., when I tell my son Matthew, when I tell my son Kyle, when I tell my family, you know what? Dad's about ready to do something. They go, man, what's this? Because he steps in, he starts making incredible money. We start traveling the world. We get introduced to all these incredible people. Man, when dad gets excited about something, stuff is about ready to happen. Has it happened every time? No. Am I perfect? Hell no. Is everything I tried worked? No. But guess what? Most of them worked and didn't. And that's why I'll never stop changing. I'll change. I embrace change. I suggest to you that you embrace change. Learn to be open-minded. Learn to say, well, listen, let me gather all the facts first. How is this going to work? How is this going to work? Watch how you're asking your questions. Watch how you're asking your questions. If people are reaching out to you, because you guys all know that karma, you know what I mean? So if you're not very responsive to people and how you can help them make changes in their life, it's all about you. It's all about your people. See, then guess what? You're going to notice that that's going to be happening the other way around. Change. You want people to change the way they react to you? Change the way you react to people. People call me up and say, wow, I found out today that my company's shutting down. I'm like, that's awesome. <laughs> and they're like, what? I go, yeah, that's awesome. Y your whole life is going to be new. It's all going to be exciting. You got new things going on. You know, Rob Rolls tells me, he says, hey, listen, you know what? I'm moving to Texas. You know, I can guarantee you guys, if you ask Rob, I'd like to know how, how much I rank and the number of friends of his that call up and say, hey, did you find a place in, in Dallas yet? Yeah, yeah, I found a, a number one and number two. Listen, did you, did you close on your home yet? Yeah. Did you find a, you know, did you find a, uh, how are you moving? Is, is that going to be, no, no, I got, I'm asking them every question I ask people is how is this, I don't like asking questions. Hey, you know what? You're making a decision in your life. Carrie and David Bigner, you guys are making a, an incredible, exciting change in your life. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How is that going to affect me? Let me see if Carrie and David get into this and then they're going to go crazy. I'm their enroller. I'm going to have to be available all the time. I'm going to have to, uh, you know, take my schedule and throw my schedule away because they might need me to talk to people at any time, day or night. Um, you know, and that's going to cut into my uh, goofing off and being lazy time. And, and no. If you ask Carrie and David, I just brought them over and I said, listen, I'm available day and night. When do you need me? How can I help you? What can I do for you? How can I help support this change? 
Um, I don't know. How about if I do an interview with you? Can we do an interview? And, and what we'll do is we'll start out doing an interview and we mastermind. This is not all my idea. And then we mastermind and then we put together a video. So it was David Carey and I did a video and we interviewed them, you know, and they interviewed me. And then they made a decision that they were just going to say farewell. They weren't even going to say the company that they're leaving. You know what I mean? And all of a sudden, they're putting this video together, and everyone's excited. You know, they're the kind of individuals that when they do an interview with me, they actually use the interview. You know what I mean? And so it's all about trying to help other people instead of worrying about yourself. And so title is how to handle change. If you're having tough times in life, I want you to ask yourself simply, are you resisting? Are you resisting? Are you ignoring? Are you fighting things that are going to happen anyway? Are you positive and you embrace change? You're open-minded to it. You're excited about it. Think about it. So anyway, this is Robert Hollis. You can check out lifemechanic.com. This will be blog up there sooner or later. And guess what? Are you are 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 you are you doing your best? Yeah, are you? <laughs> All right. So anyway, Love each and every one of you. Check out lifemechanic.com. Uh, some really exciting stuff happening for the people that are involved in Life Mechanics University. We'll be talking about that tonight. Take care. God bless. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.